Hey guys, how's it going? So welcome to the second tutorial on Vesta. So in the last tutorial, I already showed you guys how to download a SIF file and how to open it using Vesta. So in the towards the end of the video, uh, we I showed you guys how to download a silicon SIF file from the American Mineralogist Crystallography database and we opened that so we'll be continuing from that so here what I have is I have a silicon crystal structure open using Vesta and uh, you can see that you can very easily visualize it you just basically click on the screen and then move your mouse in whichever direction you want and the fun thing is that it has this axis um, denoting whatever the position of the crystal is at a particular location so now in this tutorial what we'll be doing is I'll be taking you through some of the features or the graphical user interface of the Vesta so like what all these functions do and so I'll be just walking you through all the features of Vesta and okay so without further ado let's start the tutorial so first of all now what you can see is that I have you know move my crystal a lot and I don't see it very regularly so in order to position it in a more regular or a better pattern I don't know what to say just you can click here to view the crystal along the a-axis so in case you you know move it a lot and the orientation becomes all wrong then you don't have to worry just click on a to uh, to view it along a then click on b to view it along b click on c to view it along the c axis a star b star c star and then you have a standard orientation which is uh, better as it shows you a kind of a 3d image then what you can do is you can rotate it around along the x axis by clicking here then rotate it along the x axis in the opposite direction and you come back to the initial position then you can rotate it around the z-axis and then you can rotate it back to come back to the initial position and you also have you can set the step width that is one rotation would produce one click would rather produce a rotation of 45 degrees so you can set it to 90 and then when you rotate it it will rotate by 90 degrees so after four clicks we come back that is we do a 360 and come back to the initial position then you have this button that translates your crystal upwards and downwards and you can translate your crystal leftwards and rightwards here and again you can set, set the step width in terms of pixels now I tend to uh, you know use these figures for research papers so I just translate it nearer to the you know axes and then I take a snapshot then you have this zoom in button zoom out button and then you have a fit to screen button and again you have the step width so this is the upper toolbar that we have covered now coming to the lower toolbar now the output screen shows the all the you know programming stuff that Vesta is doing now in order to get better or more useful information what you can do is you can click on summary to get all the information about your crystal so you have the lattice parameters you have the lattice angles then you have the space group and that's all and you have the volume and then you have the comment tab then the output tab so whenever you perform some operation you know this tab uh, you know writes down the output and it shows you the CPU time etc etc now coming to the left toolbar so what you can do is you can click here and then you will come into the selection mode and you can select a particular atom like this by clicking on it and you can also what you can do is you can just click on it and then press delete to delete this atom then if you want it back you can just press ctrl z to undo your action so that way you can you know in this mode you can select your atoms or you can even select a bond and then delete it so this is a another useful mode to have then you have the translate mode where you can just pick your crystal up and place it anywhere you want and then you have a magnifier which again just you know use to magnify your crystal then you have a let me just put it back then you have the bond angle kind of thing um, sorry the bond distance 
uh, measure so what you do is you click on these two atoms and then you will get the bond distance between them that is 2.35156 angstrom and you even get the positions of the two atoms that it is measuring the distance between then you have the bond angle measuring tool so you just uh, let's say you want to measure the angle between these bonds okay so um, okay let me see if I did it correctly or not okay yeah so now it's measuring the angle between these three bonds I guess or I guess it's measuring the angle between these this this angle right here I think let me just um, unselect it all and do it again okay so I want this angle okay right so we want this angle so you click here then here and then here so it should be yeah now it's correct okay so now you are getting a angle of 109 degrees among these three you know atoms that is this angle right here so you get 109 degrees for this so it is another useful tool then you have a another two tools that is the interfacial angle dihedral angle I don't really use this so I guess I'm not really sure about the uses then you have the style tab right here now it shows you certain options about how you would like to model your system so what you can do is you can show a dotted surface if that's what you want then you can have a face uh, space filling model right here and you can have a polyhedral model you can have a wireframe kind of thing you can have a stick model so these are the models that you can have although I have only seen people using the polyhedral and ball stick so in my usage these are the two most commonly used models however in your usage you might find the others also useful then you have um, before coming to these three you can go to objects where it shows you that what kind of things you would like to see here so if you don't want to see bonds just uncheck that if you don't want to see atoms uncheck that if you don't want to see polyhedra uncheck that however we have already turned off the polyhedra mode so and then you can select the atoms at once by clicking here which is currently not working I guess because I selected okay so I mean I used to be able to select the atoms by clicking on here but I guess it isn't maybe I need to make it like this no it is not working right now okay so I don't know I mean I'm pretty sure I was able to select atoms by just checking these but it's not working right now so anyway now coming to tools then you have this cool animation effect right here so you can just you know click in whichever direction you want it to be rotating then you have a push where I guess you can just slide your mouse and push it to rotate it or something then you have a random animation where it rotates in a random manner and uh, then you have these options to make sure that you rotate them in some along some particular axis so these are all the tools on your screen now coming back to the style tab we have these three boxes over here that is properties so coming to the properties you have some options like do you want to the show the unit cell that is these uh, you know this cube right here so if you click on do not show and then you can see that it has disappeared if you want to show a single unit cell you can click here if you want to show all the unit cells because sometimes what you have is you have a supercell so or you have some extended um, forms and if you want to show all the unit cells then you can click here if you want to show a single unit cell then you can click here then you can choose dotted lines to show you in cell dash lines or whatever you want you can set the line thickness the color of the line and all that you can show this compass or not that is up to you you can show the labels or not you can set the 
shape and color of the shapes so I guess um, this refers to the color of the atoms so let me just change this I'm not sure if it's making any difference do I need to click on ok no it didn't work ok so I don't know what is this for ok so it is white right now now if I want it to be red then what what is changing to red ok first of all let me just start this animation it's making me nuts ok then coming back to style properties okay so this is the shape of material shiny show edges okay i guess this all this is for the shape okay so this part was for unit cell this was for axes this is for shapes and what does this do okay i'm not seeing any changes so let me just change it back to the default black color okay so if you find it then you tell me in the comment section down below I don't understand what this is about though I was pretty sure that it was for changing the color of the atoms however I think the color of the atoms can be changed from the atom tab so here you have the again you have something for material however I think that the color for the atom can be changed from here so make it pink so that changes the color of the atoms then you have the radius that is how big you want your atoms to show up so you can change that from the radius tab and okay so now you have pretty huge atoms <laughs> okay so now let me just change it back to whatever it was 1.18 something right okay so you can change that from here then um, okay then, then there's a bunch of other information that I don't understand really and you have okay so now there's another important option that is what kind of radius do you want it to be do you want it to be the atomic radii the ionic radii or the van der waals radii so you can cho choose it from here although i usually choose atomic and then you have the resolution that i don't really understand then you have bonds that is the curve of bonds i hope Although again, I don't think that it is going to make any difference. Yeah, just what I thought. So I'm not really sure what do these things do. Okay, so you can change the type of bond, the styles from here. So again, this is another visual tool. So I like the bicolor cylinder more than the unicolor cylinder, so I'll just stick to that. Then again you can choose the radius and the width of the bonds then you have the polyhedra styles various styles here then the shininess material etc okay so finally i get it okay finally yeah so specular is not color right so it doesn't change the color it changes i think the surrounding like the you know the aura kind of thing so i guess it is that because we have the shine button also so if you you know just take it down real quick then i think the atoms will become pretty dark right and okay now finally i think i got this so specular means that you know what you are seeing here is is the you know like it is this shiny ball kind of thing and you are seeing it shining on the center so it it is looking white right now now if I change it to black then I guess you will see a black shine okay now okay I really don't understand what that is about because I really thought that it would turn to black right now okay so it is not black right here okay now okay it won't change to black either for some reason or maybe some other color Okay, no, it is not working. It just goes back to white, and the shininess also didn't have any effect on the shine of the. App. Okay, now 
maybe I can change that from here maybe if I make it black yeah finally okay so this one is I guess for the unit cell or something I don't really know what this one is about but for the atoms you can change the color of shine that is you want it to shine in a you know with a orange color with a darker black color like this so basically no shine etc so let's just stick to the default gray value or whatever it was and you can even increase the shine by using this okay finally we know what that is about then again for bonds you have this shine so you can change the shine of the bonds using this the color of the shine then you have the polyhedra and all that stuff along with the polyhedral shapes then you have the properties for isosurfaces like um, isosurfaces like a lattice plane if you are going to be visualizing the lattice plane then you can have settings for that then you have sections and i don't know what that is about okay so just close it then coming to boundary what we have here so we have a bunch of options where we can set the range for how many unit cells you want to be displayed i guess because if i change it to two then it increases the number of atoms being displayed uh, displayed along the x-axis that is now twice the number of atoms will be displayed that is twice the length of the lattice parameter a would be shown now Similarly, if you increase it to 2, then it will show twice the, you know, the B lattice parameter. So it will show twice the number of atoms along the Y axis if you change it to 2. So that's all. So you can make it 6 and then click apply. So now you have 6 times the number of atoms in a single unit cell. So this is our small unit cell right here and the uh, number of units, the atoms is now six times than that in being shown in a single unit cell. So let's just stick to a single unit cell representation and make all these one apply. And then you can even cut off your atoms by selecting a lattice plane. That is, let's say you want only the atoms below this plane right so this is a one one plane i guess one on the c axis and one on the b axis and it is parallel to the a axis so one zero or zero one one right so zero one one apply okay so now as i said so now what this did was it now it is showing only the atoms okay now i made some changes here free rotation okay so now what this does is it you know creates a boundary at the 101 lattice plane that is this diagonal plane and then it removes all the atoms below that so that is what has been done here so that covers the boundary part so now you know all what this stuff does then you have the orientation where you can set the orientation of your unit cell so you can project it along the normal lattice vectors or the reciprocal lattice vectors hkl and then you have the orientation matrix so i guess right now it is okay so now right now it is oriented along the c axis so we have 0 0 1 because it is oriented along the c axis now if you want to view it along the a axis then you can position it like this and then you will have the another orientation mat matrix so now you're viewing it along the a axis so and as you move it you can see that how your orientation matrix is changing I don't think that you will be ever using this feature I don't think it's of very big use so that's it that's your user interface although I have still skipped a lot of functions right here okay so now 
let me just quickly cover all these and then in the next tutorial we'll be covering what all these functions in these tools do okay so we have file so we have new structure new window open recent etc and then you have how to you know you can export data that is whatever you have you know created right now you can save it as an xyz file or you can save it as a pdb file or you can save it as a zip file or some input files like for boss software cam 3d software etc so you can export whatever you have created right here into various modes then you can export it as an image so you have all the image you know types right here so all that stuff is right here you can save the output text etc then you have edit where you will be able to edit your unit cell all the phases structure parameters etc all that kind of stuff so you will be able to create a unit cell from scratch instead of you know downloading one and then you have the view where you can you know create armor i mean Cha make changes accordingly how you want your atoms to be displayed like you can have them displayed parallelly but i like the perspective mode because it shows how which atoms are in the front and which are in the back then you have zoom in zoom out fit to screen overall appearance etc then we objects where structural models we have already covered that we have already covered properties boundary orientation we have already okay we have not covered utilities so we'll be covering all these and then we have the help so not much is left to cover in the for the next tutorials we only need to cover the utilities and the edit section so that's it i know i was a bit off in this tutorial i mean i sometimes i didn't know what i was doing but that's only because i am learning with you guys so if you enjoyed this video or learned something from it then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like the video and thanks for watching i hope i was make uh, i was able to make all this stuff as easy to understand and help you in some way well that's it thanks for watching have a nice day